Good afternoon, Dr. Martin. My name is Corylin Billiot. I am completing my personal six-week deposition. I come to you from the outskirts of the city of New Orleans, Louisiana. I work about 10 minutes outside the city in a city called Gretna, Louisiana at a school called Gretna Middle. I live on the East Bank, so I have about a 20-30 minute ride to and from depending on traffic. I currently teach 8th grade math. Um, I've been knowing since a very young age. Math was something for me. I've always loved math, but being a teacher I've come to realize not everyone does. So with that being said, I did com complete my deposition assessment and just like you said, I did do mostly the strongly agreed. Um, I will try and not take too much time and kind of give my explanations of why. Um, so my first one that I went with was educators should believe that all students can learn and should set and support realistic expectations for student success. Um, I chose that one personally because I have taken on some SPED students that are also athletes and so being in eighth grade once you merge into that high school learning that if you go into high school with the sped background typically they put you in a sped class and that's kind of where you stay and so i just kind of want to give some of those students an opportunity to come to a standard class and see what they're capable of fulfilling um these students actually came to me making the request of wanting to be in my class and asking if I'd be willing to help them be successful. So, of course, my answer is was yes. I have a hard time saying no. And so, um, being a coach, I get very close with the students. So, I took these students on and lo and behold, as long as you take your time and give these kids some one-on-one, -on -one, they actually can catch on. Will they be able to test as quickly as other students? Probably not. Will they need some extra time? Definitely. And so the agreement is, is that they are allowed to go back upstairs to that classroom that they came from to take their test, which I'm fine with. Um, but I have learned that they set that goal for themselves. They wanted to be in a standard class. They wanted to be in that standard setting. They didn't want to feel like they were the special ed student per se on the football team and basketball team so with that completely understood and the results I actually kind of shocked myself some of those students actually test better than what we I guess would call a standard student um, so I strongly agree with that one um, students should have the ability to set their own goals and it is our job to support them the next one I chose that I felt I was pretty strong at was educators should recognize that a reflection combined with experience leads to growth as a professional. Again, I chose that one. Um, I've mentioned and I'll mention again. I do coach. I coach quite a few sports. I coach cheerleading, um, currently soccer, and softball. Um, saying currently soccer because we just started soccer yesterday um I do recognize and agree that as long as you maintain yourself in a professional manner you will gain that respect from them students and with that being said they also take that respect to the field with them meaning they know that I'm one of those teachers I'm not joking I'm not gonna play around with you homework is due just because you may play a sport for me does not excuse you so I actually hold those students to a little bit higher um, expectation um, I know that you're capable of better but then I also realize that sometimes you kind of have to give them a little bit slack as well and so going into the playoffs with basketball being the chair coach watching the kids on the basketball court kind of played a little game the last week in playoffs um if you score so many points you'll get extra points on your quiz or maybe you'll get a homework pass so again i think if you combined 
again trying to I'm just kind of trying to read this the reflection combined with experience leads to growth as a professional I think that if they just see that not all teachers are mean or out to get them and that we are actually human and we understand and it is tiresome we get tired so I do try and have that understanding and give that flexibility to my students um the next one that I have mocked off is teachers understanding the effects of community involvement and servant leaderships as it applies to the welfare of others in the educational setting. I think I kind of cleared that one up, maybe answered two and one with the last little bit that I just said. Um, again, just believing that if we give these kids this extra attention um, and let them know that we are human and we understand that they are human and you get out so my my saying is you get what you give and so what you put into your education is what you will get out of your education um and another one that i chose real quick was educators should demonstrate professionalism friendliness warmth and genuine care in their relationships with others while providing intellectual emotional and spiritual support so again all kind of piggybacking one another um again giving the students the respect that they feel that they are entitled to per se I do give that because I get that back and although they may not see it in a way that I am giving it meaning they may think they winning or they have the upper hand but I feel like if I just kind of give them that moment I get that respect in return um and again only teaching for a short period of time one of my greater things that I've come to realize is if I choose the captain or the leader of and I kind of ping into them and get into their mindset and get them on board with me and my learning style usually that's kind of my right hand man for that year or that nine weeks whatever have you I feel like that's kind of where I went at um being involved with those kids I am able to say hey why don't you kind of help me out here um lead the kids this way so if he's captain on the field and he's captain in my classroom it's kind of like a win-win scenario he feels like he is the man all the way around and I'm fine with that I'm absolutely fine with them thinking that they have that control um my weaknesses that I found about myself, which is actually not on a supposition that I'm fine sharing, is I am a very vocal person. Um, I have learned that demand respect, because if you don't demand respect, then you probably won't get the respect. I teach in a very different kind of economical I guess is a nice way to say um, class of kids that come from a very high style um, kind of family members I'm trying to choose my words wisely um, these kids that I teach in particularly come from that lifestyle of constantly being fussed at and demanded around and in a form of I guess being mistreated in a way that they are talked to and so with some respect I have learned that I have to give that same high order demand I have to be a bit loud I have to put my foot down I have to say no when it's time to say no I was told um, during my observation right before the holidays that um, and quote from my principal Miss Boyat the one thing I really want you to work on this break is toning down your voice not needing to fuss so much but I tried that and being a very short woman I stand 5-1 um, that just doesn't work for me I have to be a very verbal controlling person when it comes to demanding respect respect as far as um, certain rules like when I'm standing here at the Prometheum it is my time to teach my time to talk I do not teach and I will not fuss and holler over kids talking. Um, I've learned that if I just kind of stand at the Promethean board and just stand there, you have those students that actually really are 
engaged and they want to learn and they want to finish the lesson out and then you have that group of silly people that just won't give you that respect that you're demanding and so I just kind of stand there and I just refuse to teach for a moment of time and I have learned that that is what works for me so my weaknesses are one I do tend to be very vocal um but I back that with feeling like that's my way of getting their attention because unfortunately that is a lifestyle that those kids are used to um so that is my weaknesses um so I'm gonna jump because now my time is running long I'm at 10 minutes I'm gonna jump into what should a professional teacher look like yes I do agree with you when it comes to professionalism um as you see today I have a blouse on I have a cover-up on that's typical me that's typical Miss Bill Yacht but again coaching and on game days I do tend to dress down um I'll wear whatever the spirit shirt is or I will wear my jeans tennis shoes because usually on an event day our days will be if I know that you know you're a coach those days could be up to 12 hours long we get to school at seven o'clock in the morning and we didn't get home Tuesday night from basketball until about seven o'clock so very long days so those days I do choose to be comfortable but when it's a non activity day like today I do do my best to give them a little bit more professional side of me just so they can see that side of me and I really haven't had a reflection of it being good or bad from the students if I say anything um, on a funny side I actually get reprimanded from disciplinarian because there may be times that I'm running through the hallways trying to get from one location to the other um, get the girls ready for cheerleading making sure everybody gets on a bus if I forgot something running back to my classroom I've actually been fussed at at disciplinarian for running through the hallways on those dress down days I'm in tennis shoes I'm in the spirit shirt um, I stand 5'1 and I'm running through the hallway so if I've actually been reprimanded by disciplinarian which I think is quite funny but um, I do agree with you but I would like to add even on those days that I do dress up with my slacks and the blouse and the cover-up I do choose and I've learned that I also choose my tennis shoes on those days as well my first few days um, I'm sorry my first few years I did wear the heels and in the winter time I usually will change that up a little bit you know boots for women are a little bit more in but typically even on my dress dress up days I still opt out for the comfortable tennis shoe just because um, I do stand on my feet a lot I'm not a teacher that teaches from my desk so um, math is very engaged and you need a lot of examples and I have a board and a Promethean board and so I find myself moving around the classroom a lot my classroom is set up in groups so with that being said I'm constantly on the move I'm not a teacher that sits at my desk so that's why I opt for the tennis shoes um, but again, I do agree. I do think that how you present yourself is the form of respect you get. Um, I hope I covered everything that is required of me for this deposition. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and end this. And I would like to say it has been a pleasure to be in your class. This is the first time I've taken complete online. So I will not lie and say this was easy by any means because it's a challenge to juggle it all but I will say it was definitely a pleasure you have always answered every question that I've had or concern that I've had so you've definitely made my first class pleasurable experience and I look forward to seeing what comes in the future and I know that you said when we first did our personal biographies you like the city of New Orleans so if you ever happen to visit the city of New Orleans look me up Corey Lynn Billiot or as my students call me Miss B have a great evening Dr. M nice to meet you